the range of political movements, social movements, and ideologies that share a common goal to define, establish, and achieve political, economic, personal, and social equality. Art has reminded people to find their voice. The following pieces exemplify the way that women use their powerful voices to challenge long-held ideals, to lend courage, and to show solidarity and support for other women. To give a little background on this painting, it's based on the biblical story of Susanna and Daniel, a Jewish hero. The story goes that Susanna, the wife of a good Jewish man, was bathing in her private garden when she was ambushed by two elders who could not contain their desire for Susanna. Upon confronting her, they threatened that she must sleep with them or else they'd spread a rumor that they had caught her lying with another man. She decided to not have sex with either of them and resigned herself to whatever fate may lie for her. The elders held a trial to condemn her for adultery and she was sentenced to be stoned to death. However, the heroic Daniel stepped in and demanded the court to reconvene. Upon questioning each other separately, he found that they had different stories, meaning that they had lied about Susanna. Instead of Susanna, both of the elders were stoned to death. The intention of Gentile is seemingly to call attention to the unfair depiction of women in art. Rather than portraying Susanna as seducing the two elders or being openly receptive to their flirtations, her face is turned away in fear. The way in which Susanna is depicted creates a certain amount of discomfort for viewers, which helps spin the heroic biblical story to one that focuses more on the women of the narrative. It is thought that Gentileschi's experience with sexual harassment at the hands of her tutor really influenced her to portray Susanna in this way, as upset and unwelcoming towards the intruding men. This piece uses a cool palette and a smooth application of paint creates a glaze-like surface that translates into a subtle sort of barrier between what's occurring in the painting and the viewer. This aids in lessening the discomfort caused by the painting and ensures that it's bearable to view, thus making sure Gentile Eshi's interpretation of the story is shared. The scale of this painting is rather large, and there's no question what the subject is of the piece. Susanna and her attackers are front and center and dominate the frame. The movement is apparent. Susanna has been accosted by and is trying to move away from the two elders. This movement creates a feeling of real life and adds to the feeling of discomfort that Gentile Eshi was trying to portray. The strong, definitive lines outline all the elements of the painting, draw attention to what's going on, and again, are used to call attention to the scene. Since Gentileschi was one of the most forward-thinking and most widely accepted female artists of the Baroque era, this painting began to change the way women were seen, not as objects, but as real people with emotion. Timoclea Killing a Rapist depicts the popular tale described in Plutarch's biography of Alexander the Great. According to the book, when Alexander the Great's forces took Thebes during his Balkan campaign, his forces pillaged the city and a captain raped Timoclea. After raping her, the captain asked if she knew of any hidden money. She told him that she did and led him into her garden. She informed him that there was money hidden in her well, and when the captain stooped to look down into it, Tim McClay pushed him and then hurled heavy stones into it until the captain died. Tim McClay was seized by the soldiers and brought before Alexander the Great. However, she carried herself with great dignity, and he was so impressed with her that she, he ordered she and her children to be released, and she was not punished for killing the captain. The use of Muma in showing Tim McClay picking up her rapist to throw him down a well sends a resounding message to women about strength and standing up to men. The use of chiaroscuro, a popular renaissance technique, highlights the subject of the painting found very obviously at the center of the frame. Tim McClay stands brighter than everything else in the painting, starkly contrasting to the darker tones of the surrounding scene. This frames Tim McClay and her actions as the focus, further reinforcing the message of encouraging powerful women to taking actions into their own hands. In addition, her fierce expression of determination shows that women are not stoic beings, but are full of life and emotion, a notion sometimes rejected by the men who still abided by the archaic ideology that was popular during these periods. The vibrancy of these colors, as well as the contrast between the light and the dark aspects, are visually yelling for attention and make the piece impossible to ignore. Sorani's unique interpretation of popular iconography was received with much praise, which usually spun more well-known stories into ones that visually focused on women. Her images were especially well received because the city of Bologna, where she resided, was one of the most forward-thinking places in Italy that encouraged women to create. This piece set the framework for feminist art before the term feminism was ever coined. Bologna was one of the sole places in Italy that cultivated a safe environment for women to learn and grow in the arts. At the time, female artists were expected to stick to painting portraits, yet Serrani broke these expectations rather spectacularly with Tim McClay killing her rapist, symbolically throwing down those constraints down the well along with Tim McClay's rapist.
Unlike the previous two artworks, Mary Beth Edelson's Some Living American Woman Artist is not a painting, but rather a collage of photos attached to a print of Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper. Edelson is considered a pioneer in the feminist art movement, and so it's fitting that this piece is considered one of the cornerstones of modern feminist art. The message of this work is twofold. It challenges the long-held narratives in both the history of art and religion that excluded women. Although there are no brushstrokes to analyze, no Bible stories to interpret, the pure originality and process used to create this is what makes it interesting to view. Of the 82 women found in this piece, no sent in their photos themselves. This allowed Edelson to hand cut and paste the photos onto the copy of da Vinci's image, creating a new raw and very real look. This, combined with typed labels naming each woman that was featured on the image, resulted in a roughly textured and highly tangible three-dimensional object that looks handmade and iconic. Edelson placed Georgia O'Keeffe at the center of her piece as the face of Jesus. O'Keeffe was considered the mother of American modernism and is best known for her paintings of enlarged flowers, New York skyscrapers, and landscapes of New Mexico. Surrounding her and framing the outside of the original image are women who are painters, sculptors, filmmakers, educators, poets, and writers. In addition to including women with different passions and careers, Edelson made sure to include women from all parts of the world, which reinforced the sincerity that the piece was created with. It successfully championed numerous women, and instead of drawing comparisons or putting them against one another, they all shared one table and one frame. By putting strong, creative women over the figures of religiously powerful men painted by a renowned male artist, this new image stands up against the patriarchal ideas that followed throughout the history of art, as well as the role of religion in the subordination of women. With this image, women didn't just take a seat at the table, they took over the whole thing. These works of art challenge the narrative of what a woman should be, how a woman should act, and the way that women are represented. Gentle as she, Susanna and the Elders defies the long-held notion that women are to be drawn as sexually desired objects and that a male's attention should be welcomed. Sarani's Tim McClay killing her rapist empowers women by portraying Tim McClay as her own heroine, not depending on someone else to exact her justice for her. Edelson's Some Living American Women Artists give a voice to all women artists and prove that they are more than what religion or historical art paints them to be.